You know, so it isn't anything to do with hatred or anything. So I tell uh, Maxine knows. You know, Barry say I don't I don't always agree. Sometimes on this short program, Kimar says things and I said I said oh, no 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 and I I I, I step in. It, 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 so when some person can make a position that unless they've only watched one or two shows and they've watched the show that um came down on the gap where the government has done a lot of nonsense like with this whole check thing you know i i can you know so what do you want me to do don't say anything about it i can do that but you would have to apologize first when you apologize and say well i did the wrong thing i stop because that is um you know you don't kick a fellow when he's down and if she was gracious enough to say look i am sorry i made a mistake you know and um i can do it again you know that, that's all well and good and handy resignation to the speaker yeah, all well and good with me i'd be i'd be i would have to comment on it anymore because it might be fixed right, but let me start with the pension reform and national insurance this is one of the things that they did very badly they did very wrong government denied that this was an IMF inspired project but the chairman of the national insurance came on the brass tax program that conquered what he was saying and admitted that much I, I said, well, boy, if he's a vice bear chairman, boy, he got he got, got a lot of luck. He got, got something holding on these people because he actually admitted that the IMF gave you a deadline to get this thing done. January 1st, and but they want to do it before January 1st to get this thing going. They said, one, that the National Insurance will make it a statutory board. National Insurance was a statutory board from inception. The right, excellent Errol Walton Barrow made national insurance a statutory board that is not in dispute if you look at the legislation you will see that it says it is a body corporate the 1966 legislation it then the only difference between national insurance and any other statutory board in barbados what national insurance had a difference the board was supposed to concentrate on managing the national insurance fund because borrow so foresaw that that fund would be massive and it will need expertise and in, in, in managing f money and he decided look you know something let the people who do with personnel matters deal with personnel matters we don't want a board that will be managing a billion dollar fund to be who, who can work late and who had two hours over time and that kind of thing he said no let the personnel people deal with that we will continue to they will, so they will be still subject to the service commission. So up to, until the 1st of December this year, everybody employed in national insurance should have been employed by a service commission. They call it now the Administrative General and Professional Service Commission, previously the Public Service Commission. So they changed that. And they came up with this monstrosity and in order to get the workers to go into national insurance to st they threatened them and and then event and then that wasn't seeming to be working they bribed them because people have now gotten jobs at national insurance what they previously done they're giving them now two thousand dollars more for coming over to the board one young man like he's a young man because he's my age who had actually submitted his res his retirement papers when he saw the new amount of money that he's going to be getting he said like i got another three years i could work and he, he, he sent back the papers because it, it, it i don't blame him now if you can get two thousand dollars a month for the next three years you know and you really just go go home and, and the garden i would tend the garden but even after i leave home, after I, after when i get money to leave work you know so that was the case so a lot of people and then you have people they brought people in like the legal officers for instance the, ju the people that, who are junior in the public service but in terms of law are now getting more than the the, the deputy um 
director of public prosecutions. Now, ju junior lawyers and the one and the senior lawyers in, 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 in the public service, they, they go and pass them, and and do, and and then they created um, ten ten chiefs. Well, there were actually there were two already, and then they created eight more. They came and then they amended the legislation to pull it back. They created another eight chiefs. And these people are not going to be doing anything new in national insurance. This work is already being done by the people there. You're just going to bring people on top to give them um, permanent secretary pay because they're going to be getting a lot of money, almost as much as a permanent secretary, and they're not anywhere near where a permanent secretary is. But no, that takes care of the national insurance fund because the national insurance does not make money. So when they call it a, a commercial state enterprise, that is a joke. Commercial state enterprises make money, for instance, or, or should make money, because CBC is a commercial state enterprise. They have not made a penny in years, but they have potential of making money. Right? So these these um, agencies that are supposed to make money, the transport board, who don't make any money either, but they should. They are commercial state enterprises. National Insurance receives money from each worker in Barbados, or should receive from each worker in Barbados, and they take that money, invest it for you, and then pay your pensions, your invalidity benefits, your sickness benefits, maternity benefits, pensions, or what have you. So it is not national insurance, so they're, going, they're making money. So when you go into the national insurance fund and take out so much money to fund wages, you are going to put a strain on the on those funds because the people when they were attempting to satisfy the IMF, the IMF dictates, they took they, they went ahead and bribed people to stay in national insurance. So so when you see the minister on TV and and, and Lord forgive him because he knows what he's doing, but I can't say he doesn't know what he's doing, but he's serving two masters. The Prime Minister and he's a preacher in the Adventist Church and they tell them already that those two jobs are not consistent with each other because I saw him in the house saying things that I know that were, that were not true mind you I saw him in the house one time actually saying that um, we're on a year we should be stoned you know I don't even know that I should do that but um but I just to show you that he is not being the the preacher type material that he's supposed to be but I'm not going to go further down that road right then the next thing is pension reform the government and the IMF lied to the people of this country by saying that they did an actuarial review on the government pensions and government pension plan and they they found that they got to make changes to the the plan because it it was not viable and whatever else of thing. You know, that sounds good. That when you the actuaries did some work on it and the you listen to the actuaries and stuff. That is an absolute lie. There is no government pension plan, none none whatsoever. There should have been since 1947, but every administration since then paid pensions from current revenue so they never had a fund or a plan so when you join the public service and you it put in a uh, in a pensionable post when you retire if you work to 33 and 30 years you get a full pension which was um two-thirds of your salary most people don't opt for the two-thirds of your salary they, they take a maturity which is um, a quarter of your annual pension and they give you that times 12 and a half and call that a majority. Thereafter, the remaining amount, they give you um, that and it's about, if you work 20 and 30 years, it's about half your salary. So you get about half your salary if you take a majority. If you don't take a majority, you get two thirds. But I always tell people to take a majority because um, you don't know how long you live. You might die tomorrow. 
I mean, all that money would have stopped in there, but you could have got paid away so that she can find somebody to marry and that kind of stuff because she would have got money. So I always advise people to take the majority. But they said they did an actuarial review of that. There was no such um, fund, no such scheme to do a study on. So that was a lie, but that was good for um for people who didn't know. So when the people hear, oh, the actuary said this and the actuary said that, people will go and believe them. But I happen to have worked in the public service a lot of years, and then I continue working with public servants all these years. So I can tell you, and some and and after all these years. That people think that I uh, I'm, I have I'm some expertise in pensions, and I know a little bit about it. There is no fund. There is no pension fund. The act is, but what they did now, however, prior to this, public workers did not actually pay out any money into a pension fund because the 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 um the reasoning behind it was that your salary in the public service was always less than you were actually worth 25 percent less but that 25 percent was supposed to be going into the fund that they were supposed that but they never put it in the fund so you were being paid 25 percent less now they're asking you to pay five percent if you work for over the national insurance maximum which is five thousand one hundred twenty dollars and it'll go up from tomorrow i can't remember how much that would be per month and if you work for less, you pay um, 3%, I think it is. So you're not, you're not being asked to pay, to pay for your pension, which is basically you're paying twice. And I can tell you why you're paying twice. Because if you are in a, a public service job and you are not entitled to a pension, you, are, you then are entitled to a gratuity. And that gratuity is paid to you after each year, at the end of each year. So if the two of us, you and I, Marcy, be working in the public service, we are doing the same job, but you, your job is pensionable, mine is not, you will get 25% more money than me. Because that 25% is supposed to be going to fund my pension. But now, they have now taken away that. So the government has actually taken away that from future public servants. And you no longer have to work 33 and 30 years to qualify for your full pension. They become, they, 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 you, you now have the privilege of working for 40 years. So that it has gone up now from 33 and 30 years to 40 years. They sneak that in and tell them about anything, you know. Most people don't know. And they are, and they are saying to you, um, oh, these are people now coming into the public service. And the unions sat and agreed and, and, and didn't say anything about it because they are not their members. No, they're not members yet, but they will be. I just say what not though. But I, 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 they have sat and have refused to stand up for what is right. Problem being that the units have now found themselves serving more than one master. A friend of mine told me that you can only serve one master. You can have several mistresses, but only one master. And but these people have have the, a master and now this mistress called Motley. And they're serving her and not the best interest of the people who pay them so th those were the first two things i want to talk about the national insurance changes and the start the, 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 the pensions pension arrangements mind you they were both denied they have denied that the national pension, there was going to be any pension reform under this IMF program. They denied it. And then they brought it in force this year to, st to start, to put the legislation in place this year for to be effective on the 1st of January tomorrow. So even though they, 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 um, they say that it is not true, they tell you one thing and do the next. I, I have, I have. That's why I have great difficulty. And if that that gentleman that who wants me to speak and, and support the government, I can't support that. Right. Also, the like I come. I want to come down now to the the republic. You remember 
well, this this starts before the beginning of last year, but it, it continues. It's because this was they, they had promised a, a referendum, and then they changed their mind and said there will be the the enemy there. There will be no referendum. Just by the head and start putting things in place. However, when challenged about making the Republic there and Independence Day the same day, the Prime Minister got up. Because I had spoken in the Senate and I, and I, I was ruled out of order before I said what he was going to say. Because they heard that like, the, the President was a bit clairvoyant and he used, because he was saying something and he heard what was, life was going along. And I, I said, you know, and Barrow got rid of um, Motley from the city. I know Motley's granddaughter, and the, man, the president ruled me out of order. And he said to me, I cannot attribute improper motives to a member of the other place. I said, I said, thank you, sir. I'm guided by you, but it seemed that you would read minds because I was going to say that she wanted to get Barrow out of independence. But since you said, yeah, I can't say so, I won't. And I moved on then because I wasn't allowed to say that. But that is the effect. So she, they want to make sure that in the next couple of generations that people, when people ask Errol Barrow, they will be saying Errol who? But they will know about Mayor Motley who brought Barbados to Republican status. And what is Republican status? Everything that we had all along except that we, did, we don't have a queen anymore. And we just have a president now. That's the only the only difference in our system of government, because everything that happens under republic was happening in the Barbados, except that we had a queen, and the president and the, and the republic requires a president. That's it, you know. So it was nothing earth shattering about Barbados becoming a republic because Elizabeth was not the queen of England who also ruled Barbados. She was the queen of Barbados, and that was done by our Barrow to keep the white people in Barbados. Because they were, during independence, they were running, you know, they were heading to New Zealand and Australia. And in order to pacify them and keep their money here, Barra said, well, look, when I beg him, we still got um, Elizabeth as the queen, and we still got John Storr as the governor, as the governor general. So it starts to pacify a few of them. Mind you, a lot of them rushed and went to Australia because they didn't want to be ruled by a black government. So that was Barrow's way of not going straight into it, um, Republican status. And so when she's talking about all complete our independence, our independence was completed in 1966. It was just a ruse to keep the, the, the um, capital in Barbados so that the white people who had money don't get vexed and run away with it. Barrow was not an idiot. So he, he, did, he, he did the smart thing. And kept our Republicans, but they said no. And she said, the anthem are going to change, the pledge are going to change, you know, and the, uh, everything can remain the same. Then, following that, next year, we had an announcement about Barbados National Day. Remember? What is shocking about that? Is that we found out about it after the t-shirts were printed by BLP people. They had in the um, Barbados National Day t-shirts printed, hundreds of t-shirts printed. Somebody got um got hold of insider information and get and jumped the gun. But the people of this country protested. So they back off and left somebody with enough Barbados National Day t-shirts they don't know what to do with. I don't know, but we ain't even got no sugar factory. Like you could get the people to work on the engines, but um, <laughs> but they were, they had them on their hands because of that's what I'm saying. This government can't keep a secret, or after not keeping a secret, they give away. They're telling people their business so that their friends can get the jump on everybody else. Because when you heard that it was going to be national day, and a young entrepreneur decided, well, I can start doing some t-shirts, he would have been too late. The bell people had them all printed and waiting. So that, that was the thing. But even now, they have not completed the process of Barbados beca becoming a, um, with a Republican constitution. They did a hodgepodge job in 
I think it's October 6, 2021. I, I, that's when it came to the Senate. When they took the old constitution that we had, made a few changes, and like I said, put a few bells and whistles on it, and said, from the appointed day, this will become the constitution and supreme law of Barbados. So when you hear people running around saying, oh, they've got the constitution, they have one. It is just that they didn't tell anybody that they were doing it. Because when I, again, I got to talk when I was in Senate. When I was in the Senate, when I saw the bill, I said, you all realize that when I pass in the Constitution here today and tell the boy nothing? People they laugh at me. So even the government scientists did not know that they were passing the Constitution that day. All they thought they were doing was to pass in the bill to make Sandra Mason the president of Barbados City Governor General. They didn't realize that section. Clause four was saying that it is no the um it, it, it is not a constitution. So I don't blame a lot of people who say we don't have a constitution because they may tell you anything. And that is one of the things that this government has been doing consistently with all the changes. If you look, national insurance that we talked about earlier, those changes came this those changes came in um in the dead of night when the boy they're looking. Pension reform, national insurance, they, they, they came. And then the next thing we want to talk about is the the Barbados National ID that also came as a secret. That that bill was passed. I've been a member of the Senate. Did not even know it was passed because they didn't circulate it. And the day I missed the Senate, when they realized I was in the Senate, Monique Tate was not in the Senate that day. Crystal Drex was not in the Senate. Or, my, or myself, and they push this thing up, up on the order paper and pass in all its stages in one day and had it put down. So by the time I hear about it, it was two years later because I never, I, I never saw that bill. They never circulated it until they were ready here so when they start talking about this national ID. And I think it's Winston who sent a copy of the bill to me. And I said, well, this, this is strange. And I went checking to see on Parliament website, but I'm going to keep on checking the relatives. I think passed ever since two years ago. So they passed it without debate, without telling people because they knew they were going to do something dirty. And then they said it was not going to be mandatory. I remember the Attorney General saying so. And they said so because we have similar laws to Jamaica. Our Constitution and Jamaica Constitution are far from each other. And the courts in Jamaica had ruled that mandatory ID card was unconstitutional. So Barbados people backpedaled and said, no, I think I'm going to manage it. If you want it, you can think you don't go do it. But now they have done everything possible to make it mandatory. And I do not know why a government that is supposed to be acting on our behalf, acting on our best interest, doing things that don't tell me what they're doing it for or why they're doing it. They're supposed to be working for us. Now, if I had the person working for me and they were doing things and none and wouldn't tell me, but if I know that person looking for a job, you know, and that is what should be happening now. These people who are deceiving us should be looking for a job. And I'm very serious about that. They should be looking for a job because they have not been honest and truthful to the people of this country. I, I make a joke all the time and I say that their default position is lying. They lie first. And then they realize, you know, some anyone tell lie about that because they're the big thing. And then they, they might tell the truth eventually. But they lie first. They always lie. And then they might come back and, 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 and change what they what they what, what they what they're planning to do. I I, I um well this again, the next thing I have here is VAT that was supposed to come down from 17% to 15%. But I think that that is um early late last year early this year but so far we didn't get it yet and everything else is going up and the sewage tax was supposed to be there for 18 months that 18 months came down and passed and they're still here and we're still paying through the shoot now that sewage tax according to Clyde Maskell is netting 80 million dollars but that money we are not seeing it coming into the system because the water authority still can't get get things right 
the money was supposed to be divided between the water authority, sanitation service authority, but it's at water authority to keep all. Again, this is something I, I can keep popping in, but it's telling you when to take things to Parliament, how to take them back. Because this bill went to Parliament to make the Barbados Water Authority um, a, a, a collection agency. And I had to point out to them that that's not the role of Water Authority. And they had to come back and make amendments to the legislation to give the Barbados Water Authority power to take up money. And because the money was a tax, and taxes are supposed to go into consolidated fund. They have not put in consolidated fund, and the water authority is doing what they like with it. And nobody knows how much it is. And right now, they have, they have promised to give the people of St. Thomas, um, I have to call St. Thomas first, that's where, that's where I'm from. St. Thomas, St. John, St. Joseph, St. Lucy, um, better water supply. And so far this year, it's become worse. And then they want then they want to introduce jobby water. That's another thing the government was doing. They have the resources now they can build a desalination plant. Because the last administration, I think it was Massinka, correct me if I am wrong, but it was under Eswick. He wanted to establish a, a series of desalination plants around the country, which would have been far better than the stooling. Uh, that's the word <laughs> water rather than desalination and they, you know I don't understand why if we are not being used as guinea pigs again because Barbados is becoming a country of guinea pigs they're allowing people from the outside world to do, do, te test their technology test their medical systems and stuff on us Master, I know I can call that word. Um, you know, they're testing them on us first. And, and that is one of the reasons I believe that this digital ID thing, they're trying to perfect it in Barbados to see how it's going to work and stuff. Then they can unleash it everywhere else, everywhere else because that is not Barbados technology. That is not something that we came up with and they said we can do. This is something that when our visiting prime minister comes to the country, she comes back with some of these basket of experiments that the people want to use on us and then she unleashes them on us. I said visiting Prime Minister because she doesn't live here. And even for tax purposes, she don't live here because you've got to be here for 183 days in order to pay taxes and I don't think she qualified to pay tax in Barbados. She's not been here that long. Right? So the, the Barbados National ID is a kind of it's, it's dangerous i don't have one i don't want one i'm not going to get one because i would like to have an id that would fit into my wallet right? you know the big one that we have don't fit into these spaces says the credit card so i would like one that would fit the credit card i've said that more than once however i do not understand why i have to pin it or why you would want me to pin it i know when i go to the bank and they give me a, a, a ATM card, even a credit card. I have to pin it because that gives me access to my money. But what do I get when I pin an ID card? What access do I get? How is that benefiting me? I don't understand and nobody has explained that so far. Because the government feels that they can come down and from on high make edicts and we must comply I, I that is not the way i work they must explain to me why it is necessary just don't tell me that i gotta do it because i have never been like that i got too much licks as a little boy for not complying to start now complying too easy but you can't beat me now i am very sorry and i'm going to tell the people of this country if you have already gotten your photograph taken, so be it. Don't pin it, however. Because I am not, mind you, I'm not going to get my picture taken and put on any ID card that I don't understand. The old ID card it had some basic information. It tell me how tall. Um, I don't know if I shrank, but um, when I was born, I'm a citizen of Barbados. 
and and mail and my name i think that's good enough for me that's all they need to know about me you know they don't need to know when they pin this thing how much money i got in any bank in barbados mind you they will be surprised because nobody gives me seven thousand five hundred dollar checks to put down so i ain't got much but um <laughs> you know so i don't have a lot so they will know that they will find out that but i don't want them to know i want them to know what i want them to know that my they should not have access to all of my business they will have access to my medical records because when you go to the hospital now they're asking you for the card i went to get some blood tests done and and I, I thought an ID card was supposed to identify you. The people saw me and there they spoke to me. I talked about the attendants. They said, hi, Frankie, how are you doing? Somebody even asked me, how's snow? You know, and mind you, by the way, snow's birthday is tomorrow. Um, so they knew enough about me that they don't need my ID card. But they have to get the ID card because the law now requires you to make them give them are they, their instructions required. An ID card is to identify you. And if you can say to the person, I, I know that is Caswell Friday. How you know it's Caswell Friday? Because we went to school together, we used to pitch together. We were in the union together. You say, hey, on the floor, keep a noise. I know that's Caswell Friday. You don't need an ID card to identify me then because you know me from your personal knowledge. An ID card is to identify you to a third party who don't know you. But not all of a sudden, it's not become mandatory. It's not become mandatory for you to vote. Under the current legislation, if you go to a polling station, once you're registered to vote and you go to a polling station and you don't have an ID card, they will go and they will check to make sure who you're saying you are and you will be able to vote. Now they're going to disenfranchise you under this legislation. You can't vote unless you get this card. You can't get a driver's license. They're blackmailing you. You can't access services in this country unless you get an ID card. And the services that they are talking about would include going to the hospital and getting a blood test, getting an x-rays, getting whatever the hospital can provide for you. So they're going to make you a non-citizen of Barbados. Make you look like a visitor when you come here on the airplane. You get sick, they rush you to the hospital and you don't got the ID card or nothing. So you want a Barbados card? That's what they're going to relegate you to if you take that ID. So enough people must tell them hell no we won't go we ain't going on that road and if you want me to go down that road we won't take you out because it's you you going to go or me going to go but and that's why i want to put a little ad here no marcia on the not this coming saturday 13th we will be marching protesting the, the requirements of that id card and I want everybody in Barbados who care about themselves and care about Barbados and care about their children to come out and say no. All right? That is as you cannot allow these people who we elect to run roughshod over the people of this country as though we are their little serfs. My next item now would be the tuition fees at KFL. Under the last administration, they instituted. Nobody, you know, I, I'm not here now trying to put a case for the Democrat Labour Party. They've already put their case, and the government and the people rejected it. They, they said, you know, things were wrong, things hard. We can't afford it, and they didn't ask you. To pay all the tuition fees, they ask you to pay a little piece. And some people couldn't afford, some people who can afford and still don't want to pay. And the government campaigned on a program that says we going to get done away with that. We can pay all the fees for UV students up to this year. Now they have reversed that policy and they're asking people to pay. And now they owe the University of West Indies millions of dollars. 
millions of dollars in fees that they have not paid to the university even though they said they would but they did that you see this is a, a, a party that will say anything to win whether it is true or not and it usually is not the truth from their from my experience with them they say what they, they tell you what you want to hear and when you hear it then they say um well we we, we weren't we didn't have the all the figures so we couldn't um give it all the figures were there they were all available they knew but they thought it sounds sexy you know and it sounds good and the dems were the worst thing in the world and now we are seeing that far from being the worst things in the world they're better than this group because we didn't have any imf lying along our throats coming down our throats taking away our uh, um, entitlements firing people the de demand that government do not pay national insurance for the staff and that's what we want to get into next and then go right into that we had the ash program when they sent the ash from st vincent volcano the place and then they had other people doing other little things around the place and government hired a whole cadre of people to clean up and government called them contract workers contract workers in barbados it, 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 because you call a person a contract worker does not make you a contract worker your contract it, it determines on the bit you are employed that determines if you're a contract worker like for instance if you are building a house and you hire a contractor you, you do not require the contractor to build the house himself he can hire his own his staff he can hire people to come in he can hire carpenters he can hire masons plumbers and whoever else to get the job done as long as at the end of the day you have a house that's what you want so those are that's a, that's a contract worker the guy who comes from my house and goes to your house and the next person's house with the beadwork and stuff he's a contract worker he works for himself if he doesn't feel like working he doesn't have to and nobody will fire him you know, and the law sets out some of the guidelines of which will determine if you are a contract worker or not. And, the, and, and to show you, these people were required to work from 7 in the morning till 3 or whatever it is, or till 4. One of the, one of the conditions for, us, for um, a, a contractor is that he can work any time. But these people were required under the rules, if, and I'm not going to read them all now, but if you look at the Employment Rights Act, they set out some of the guidelines in the first schedule which determine if you are a contractor or not. These people were getting vacation. You don't get, you don't get a contractor vacation. They were reported to certain people. They were um, being disciplined. You can tell me a contractor, come to my house to build a place, and then you curse them body, and they got it, and they suspended for two weeks you, you can't you know what i mean so so you can't so, so so everything that they were doing meant that these people were contract were not contract employees but what happens when you are a contract when you are a, a, a worker an employee you have to pay a certain portion of your national insurance contributions and the government pay a certain portion you pay 11 and 11.1 percent of your salary for national insurance but a self-employed person pays 17.1 and there's no contribution from the from the from your employer because there's none the government then pays 12 percent the the employer pays 12 percent they wanted to get away from paying that 12 percent but what is dangerous about that is that the workers, when you do not pay in that money, when he becomes ill, you don't get um, the sickness benefit. And when you reach our age, Maxine, you don't get the pension. And you can imagine a fellow who, when working for the government of Barbados, 
and then the government did not pay in his contributions. When the time comes, he goes to look for a pension, he ain't getting nothing. What, what's going to happen to him? Especially if he's an unskilled fella, ain't got no savings and stuff, was living from paycheck to paycheck and stuff. What is going to happen? To th this government is creating poverty. And they're creating long-term poverty. You know, there's not just poverty for the short term. There's poverty when they get old too. And people love them. Well, you can love who you like. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to love somebody who is taking advantage of me and looking at my face and laughing and telling me all kinds of sweet things. And people can get contracts. And then when they could give their savings room $500 out of that contract money and they can hurt them. Then you take these people out here, sir. That clean the roads, get $500, give anybody a $7,500 contribution. No, they can't. They live by paycheck to paycheck. And we had a case that was um, highlighted on this program where one young lady who was working for the government and they did not even provide basic amenities, which is required by the law, that you must have toilet facilities and stuff, but you have workers. They didn't provide them, so she had to find her way in the bushes and step down a well right down there, and then the government give, refused to give her a cent. Said that she's a contract employee. Eventually, they, they, um, with some prompting, they, they decide that she's not she's no longer a contract employee and they're gonna have to and they're gonna pay her they're gonna pay her back but they should have known that from the beginning you know and this is a government that calls itself a labor party government labor labor a labor party means they can look you can look out for labor that's what your your thing these are these are, but these are more interested in capital this should be the barbarous capital party the barbarous merchants party something like that but certainly not a barbarous labor party because they do not look out for labor they want no this um this year i've heard them saying the same tune that the employers are saying that the employment rights act should be amended because it's unfair to employers. It is not unfair to employers. But um, Minister Saku, under the last administration, if there is one thing that she can be praised for, there might be more, but this is the one that I will praise her for, is the introduction of the Employment Rights Act. She piloted that bill and put it on the books, the law books of Barbados, and it has assisted workers in this fundamental way. Because under the law, as it was before then, an employer could fire a person for any reason or for none, as long as you can play with the provisions of the contract. So you could be working for somebody for 20 years, 25 years, and then if a son come out of school, he looking for a job for that little boy. He said, well, I mean, well, we got value here, we can give you a job. And they tell you, well, you know, from, we can give notice, a month's notice, and that's the end of it. You ain't get another cent. This piece of thing that Saku put in place says that if you're going to do that, you got to pay. What's wrong with that? What do you want to change about that? What does the government want to change about that? What does Tony Moore who one of the people who saying that the act needs changing because she's saying the same thing as the Employers Confederation. The Employers Confederation is a, is a union, but it's a union of employers. There's workers union, there's employers unions. The Barbados Confederation of uh, Barbados, the Barbados Employers Confederation is a trade union. And you have the Confederate, the, the trade union confederation, I mean the Barbados Workers Union and the Employers Confederation saying the same thing. Now, one of the other things that they are complaining about is they're saying that if you can dismiss some person, it is going to be unfair if you do not give the person a hearing and give them the right to be represented and give them um, the right to have a representative. So what do you want to change about that? They say it's unfair to the employer. All the employers have to do is to do the right thing. I'll give an example of the case that I had. It didn't even go as far as the tribunal because the 
the, 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 the person who represented the employer and myself, when, when, when I put my case, she said, Caswell, you got me. Because they just told the person, left my office, don't you come back, you fired. In the end, I believe the person should have been fired. Right? But we never got there. Because when I got there, I never knew what happened. I didn't know what was going on. I just came there because she said they told me to get me. So I said, no, 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 I, I'm quite busy, but I'll come with you. When I get down, when I get there, I, I when they said, well, we didn't do the right thing. We didn't give her a hearing. We didn't give she the, the, the right to be, uh, right to appeal the decision. Then we give she a, a, a dismissal letter. So they, they agree that they will pay because they did the wrong thing. The court, the court of appeal in Barbados says that if you dismiss somebody and you do not go through the correct steps, you, um, that's the end of the matter. There's no question of, you don't got, you don't got the defense, you must do the right, the correct right steps. I don't know why you're going to change, but why do you want to change that? Make the employer do the right thing. Mind you, and as a little bit of levity, you know, I'll tell you now that when we were at the meeting, the labor officer who was presiding over the meeting, she said, I would still like to see that video, you know. I said, what video? Because I didn't know there was a video at the time. And so the people pull up the video, and I, I should have left at that point because they were in the case already. But I wanted to see the video too. And there it was, my client stealing. You know? But they had her on tape. So all they had to do was to follow the law and dismiss her. And they wouldn't have to pay a cent, you know. But then, but mind you, that was the first time I got fired by a client because she called me the next morning. Said, "Mr. Friday, I'm not so much interested in the money. I, I, really, I just want, to, I just want my name cleared. I just be hard. We don't do magic. Are you, you know, I see you even, and she fired me. But, you know." But as I'm telling you, all you have to do is do the right thing. And that's all the legislation that Saku put in place was saying. Do the right thing. And Now, if you're going to um, make people redundant, you have to have consultations. And there's certain... Con like, so you, you just, like, Bob, the people at BMC, you know, you were supposed to invite them to meetings, invite the representative to meetings and talk through the whole process with them. Or no, it, doesn't, it is no longer severance pair. It is unfair dismissal, and unfair dismissal is you break, you dismiss somebody contrary to the, the the statute. That's all it is, you know. And if if you will make the people redundant, if you if you have more than nine years service, um, unfair dismissal, you get more money than for servant spare. So it was it was in their best interest to do the right thing. But a government entity, knowing full well for more than a year that they're going to shut BAMC. And what did they do? They went to the last minute. I got people like Christmas and got the money. And you know, everybody like to. Look, we have a tradition in Barbados. If you're hungry the whole week, you get a good meal on a Sunday. Not to tell them because the people don't know that. You now you used to get a good meal, you get rice and stew and chicken and all kind of stuff. But on a Sunday, if you don't get none nuts but um, soup and two dumplings during the week, you can get rice and stew on the Sunday. And for Christmas, you can get some ham and thing. That has been our tradition, you know. And if you like jug jug, more power to you. But these people went and deprived. This is a government of Barbadians, you know, who don't understand Barbados and Barbados how Barbados operate. They say I want people at Christmas. And they get them a cent. Some people they celebrate after Christmas with the money. You know what it is to tell a little child, um, sweetheart, I ain't get paid for Christmas. The child don't want to know that. The child won't listen to every little child down the road and the boy next door. That's devastating. But this is what government inflict because they have to they have to obey. IMF dictates and deadlines. Could be. We did not elect the IMF. And when the IMF tell this government, we want you to do X in order to get our money, you will say to, the government should say to them, but you know, we got some laws that we cannot 
um, do this because our laws don't um, allow us to do so. No, they implement it, they break the law, and then they would fight it. And that comes now, when they talk about fighting, now, courts. They have messed up the court system so badly. It, but there was, there was always a little backlog here, backlog there. But when when they want to get into gear you know, and, and, and have their cases going, you can get your case done in a couple of days. Because I know of a case with a man who stole a check for $7,500. And he stole it on the 19th of December. And by Thursday last week, he was in jail. You know what I mean? You know how many people go to court and have five, six years a German, a German, a German, is up. But you can get that's what there. There is no justice in Barbados. Justice must not only be done, but it must be seen to be done. I am not saying that that fellow shouldn't go to jail. Mind you, I would give him a medal for exposing certain people. But a companion of honor, or whatever it is. Because he has now shown us that the only crooked politician in Danville, you know, and so what has happened there? He can't go on through the court and try fast, fast, fast. That don't happen in Barbados to regular. So, but the, the courts now are being used to make sure that nobody gets it. nobody the government every government can lose the case don't come up we've had election petitions or, or, or cases about elections that should have been done quickly and to date we are not seeing an outcome of those cases we i don't want to speak about myself so much but i have a case going on before the court I, I, I appeal the decision on a few grounds to make sure I, I um, appeal on time, but we need a transcript so that we can enlarge the appeal. The Court of Appeal has issued instructions to present the transcript. We go back to court six months later, the people are giving in. So the Court of Appeal make the same decision again, give them the transcript. The penal body obeying the court of appeal. So when you have a system like that, when you and especially when you're suing the government, and the government and the courts give the government an order to do something, and the and the government refuses to do it, what is that saying about the state of law and order in this country? All right, just take on it. If the government now refuses to um, pay, to, to, um, obey the court, government is doing what it's like. All like no, we have cases and we have cases, and even a government to get your property. Government decides they're gonna pay you in bonds. You can't count a bond that popular and tell you cashier I want a few ramen and that kind of thing. You must pay people in legal tender. This government refused to follow the law and giving you bonds because the IMF says so. So who is running by this now? The IMF. I don't know if the, the, the IMF ain't telling them to fix the potholes or tell them that the, the only road in has is not to fix his mind because the only road here ain't got to fix his mind. You know, Every other road around this area has been prepared and got nice black top and thing. And mine is the only one that go riggedy, riggedy, riggedy. Like, okay, I drive slow, I come up. It's not really bother me. But it just shows you how they, how they behave, they allocate government resources to punish people. My, crash, my problem is that this government cannot continue to disobey the laws, the laws that they put in place. Laws that they put in place, Public Service Act. The Public Service Act, I see I'm going, I want, going from one thing to the next. Public Service Act was passed by the Barbados Labour Party Administration in the dying days in 2008. 
I remember David Thompson walking with Leonard Paz by themselves. This act sets out certain provisions on how you must treat public officers. Would you, are you aware that you have people in the public service working and the government paying them or paying them only some of the money? I'm talking about prison officers. During COVID, you remember how a lot of prison officers locked down and stuff, had to work them 24 hours and that kind of thing. And then get and put pen number. It made a lot of noise and eventually they get them six thousand dollars. But even now that they have been released from prison, the prison officers released from prison, they have them working twelve hour shifts. And only paying them for eight hours for the last three years. And government refuses to do anything about it. That is one glaring example of the government treating workers very badly. You have this, 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 trust me prison officers are working for 12 hours the public service act does not allow any head of department to change your hours of work but they have done so and they have given them 12 hour shifts now look what happens here as a prison officer if he does not have transportation you got to get work at seven o'clock you gotta leave home for five i hope you get a five o'clock bus off and then you gotta travel and then you gotta get yourself up for seven o'clock. So that means you gotta left a little bit. You go, if you gotta leave one for five, that means you gotta be up for at least for four. Work at the prison for 12 hours and hopefully somebody comes to relieve him or they go hold on a little bit longer. And then he goes home. By the time he get home, his children sleeping. And next morning he has to bump and go again. And not only the children sleeping, the wife sleeping. And next thing you know, if you, if you don't, if you're not careful, he will not only lose um, the money that he's supposed to get, you might lose your wife too because you're coming home and the wife's sleeping, you're sleeping, and you can't do nothing. There you go. Recipe for divorce. But government does not care about workers. No, no, no. When they first joined the public service, when they first joined the unions, they had a survey done and they tell you that back then, this was in, back in the 1980s, that nurses and police had the highest rate of divorce of all public servants. Why? Because the nurses work nights and the husbands didn't. The policemen work nights and the wives didn't. So a lot of divorce as a result of that kind of thing. And right now you are set up a situation now for the, when the, the, the things will be skewed now to prison officers. Because I remember Representing the guy at the airport, he was happy at his job until tell somebody tell you, boy, you know, when you're at work, somebody home at you. And that man went berserk, left the airport door open, and all kind of things. He went across the shop and drink from and all kind of stuff. And I when I, I, I this is another joke. I, I saw so I at the meeting, when, when they heard the case against him, and everybody was saying what a great employee he was, and, and how, how they don't understand how he's behaving like this, you know. I didn't know what to do on this case because his boss was saying he was a great employee, but no, he, he come to this. I turned to him and I said, tell me something, you get a horn? And he said, <laughs> you know, anybody get a horn? We had a, a remarkable HR man. He was very tough, but he looked at me, he said, Mr. Franklin, we don't need you anymore. He's not the first person to get horn. He's not going to be the last. We can deal with this. So he went along and he fell asleep his job. But you know, that, that don't happen often, you know, because the slightest thing you don't know, the game bring up for. But he said, look, he's a remarkable for the working real good and thing. But the supervisor they're off, he will go and do the supervisor work and stuff, you know, he get paid for it and stuff. And then all of a sudden he just become a ridiculous employee. Something had to be wrong. So I, I because I've been around this place long enough, I I he's throwing that kind of my head I said, Tell me something, you get hurt? And he said, he, 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 you know, and <laughs> when, I, when he couldn't answer that question other than mumbles the uh, chairman said Mr. Franklin thank you we don't need you anymore he is not the first man to get horned he's not going to be the last we're going to deal with this I, 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 I still remember him for that I mean the, the uh, chairman for that we, we had a lot of tough battles but this one 
he had sympathy and empathy and everything. I don't know if he ever got harmed too, and he knew what it was, but he he um thing. But th this government, not to be said, right? This government is not looking out for the best interest of civil servants. I went into the act a little bit, and I want to talk about the conditions. They were going to provide uh, all these great things for workers. And every week, you hear some place closed down because of mold. Some place um, turned down because of fungus. Some place down to rat. Some place down because they didn't get clean and all kind of stuff. And, gov and, and only when there is pressure put on them, then they would um, start do something. But in the meantime, workers are working in conditions in, that's dangerous to their health and they get sick and when they get sick the government refuses to pay them and appointed public officers do not get national insurance and in, uh, unemployment benefits or, or um, sickness benefits so you, you don't give them their salary and they're not entitled to national insurance what do you expect those people to do and again, the prison is one of the biggest um, offenders in that regard because you have prison officers who get sick on the job and for, and for a lot of things because you got people working 12 hours and then got to spend the next three hours again at home and then back their stuff for another 12. They can get sick. And when they get sick, you're telling them that they have overdrawn salary and they're taking people, joking around people money taking it out. And nobody is fixing it. Nobody is doing anything about it. The minister knows. I know the minister knows. You know, and the body do anything about it. They're treating workers very badly. On the other hand, they are employing people in the public service, in public service jobs, and calling them and, and, like because if you're a temporary officer, you are still bound by the public service act. So the minister can't hire you, but they're doing it. Ministers are getting jobs for people and getting a whole bunch of money. They're even employing contract crooks you know we, we had that debate here they have been there they, they um bring people in people who have criminal records who have active criminal cases going on and you bring them in as consultants and all kind of stuff and now we see what's happening because those same consultants that's got to pay back some of the money to um whoever to um keep their job and they are actually in place and government is is made is is employing criminals mind you know if you were a public officer and you commit a crime you could be dismissed it is, it is it's an offense for which you can be dismissed if you're a public officer but they're going to pick up criminals and pay them with the government purse so these are these are inconsistent things that this government is doing all like now now even if you were a public officer and you had a criminal record and you didn't disclose it then you get the job when they'll find out you're gone, you know. But you are hiring people that you know that have active cases. You know that got people who had long records and you're giving them $8,000 in some cases and then the fellas that the, the big criminals get $8,000 and the small criminals get too. And you are telling me that it is against the law for a section of the public service, but not for these people. What is this government doing? But I and I, I always talk about this, and you have to forgive me, Marcia. They have associated themselves with the criminal element of society, and I know for and I know because when I first became a senator, I wanted to go and be proud and I take my wife to Parliament. Open it because they you know, see all the ladies coming there with their hats, and then they want my wife to get a big hat. They can buy a big hat for my wife and sit down and block up people too, like everybody else. And I asked for a, a, a thing for my wife, and they tell me, No, that the men got enough space so they can't accommodate my wife. So I got there myself. And then I go outside and I see the police quarreling that they got criminals inside here, drug dealers and stuff, that they get invited, and my wife ain't getting that. So they, they, this government has made sure that they, they take care of the criminal element. So when they tell people we can get the murders down, all they have to do is call their friends and say, let's start killing people. At least for a little bit. And we can use some money. 
so that body figures come down, you know, because they knew who they were. And they could go and identify them and say, well, look, man, they're making me look bad. Stop killing people. And if I just stop. You know, so if the government knows who the criminals are, tell the commissioner of police. You want to keep it a secret and get on board? Let me see coming on my list. And and that is um yeah, I, I got rampant crime come down this list. But um but we're seeing it. Now, everything is going here where when it comes to crime in Barbados. They are they, they laugh at David Thompson. Then David Thompson was talking about crime and violence. I know we got all kinds of crime and violence going on and there and there and their way of controlling the crime and violence is to pay the criminals. All right? Should be sorry about that. We have to deal with that. To deal with that and we have to tell the government if you can handle that job, go along and let somebody let's do it. Because right now they're not doing a very good job. I, yeah, I might say you had a thing where you're asking from A to F. But you know, even though you get A to F, you can still get a U. Because the fellas didn't show up. There's an ungraded, you know, are you going to grade them? So I give them a U. Ungraded. So far. They might, I don't think you can get less. Electricity. This bothers me a lot. Because they were going to bring down the cost of electricity, and so far, the only time electricity came down is after Kimar showed them up for a little bit. Remember last last month, after Kimar did his video, you know, and the the shame because they are saying that the the um, fuel adjustment charge, you know, keep going up and up and up, but it keeps going up and up and up when they're buying fuel cheaper. And Kimar was able to show that the the fuel adjustment charge. Is the largest part of the bill, and they did a little thing for us, and might, and thankfully, people of Barbados owe Kimar a debt of gratitude. They owe him a lot of debts of gratitude, and that was one. But what I want to concern myself with is the Utility Regulation Amendment Act that was recently passed. That act, well, this is one that should, should not repeal just now. That act. It's a very short piece of legislation. It says, the minister may, on the recommendation of the commission, or on his own initiative, exempt the supply of electricity from a renewable energy resource by a, re a renewable energy producer from the application of all or any of the provisions of this act, where the minister is satisfied in all circumstances that the exemption is required in the public interest. Ralph Torn put paid to that. So I don't think I can be as eloquent as Ralph Torn, but just to tell you that public interest don't mean anything. But one of the things that bothered me is that Minister Abrams got up on the floor of the house and said that, oh, I don't know where you're worried about that, that the similar provision exists in the law already. I'm not going to read the similar provision for you. Because people will tend to believe him if you don't bring this. The Utility Regulation Act, Section 37, that these with exemptions. It says the minister may, on the recommendation of the commission or on his own initiative, exempt the utility, utility service supplied by a service provider or part of that utility service from the application of all or any of the provisions of this act. This is the clincher. Where the minister is satisfied that the market for utility service supplied by the service provider is effectively competitive. 
So that is the clincher there. It must be competitive. So if you have people out there, the market is, is um, it's pretty competitive. You, you can let the market run itself. But you cannot have a situation where a mirror ink is the only bread supplier ready because everybody got passed through the mirror. So if you then give a mirror the opportunity because they are not competitive, but the minister said, it's, oh, it's in the public interest. Next thing you know, they're giving more red herrings. I'm not seeing a pollution here because she can remember her brother Wendell who used to fight hard for these people. I, I, that is, you know, he used to fight every time they had a red herring man. Be, be, people, that's, I got to know him from then. You know, he used to fight. You wouldn't have that anymore. So when the minister said a similar provision exists, it isn't on all fours because one is saying it's done in the public interest and the other one is saying the, when the service is effectively competitive. So they actually go to parliament and twist the truth as far as they can twist it without breaking it. That truth is so contorted, no, nobody, you can't recognize it. You, you can say, well, it, it's similar. Yeah, it's similar, almost the same words. But then the last few at the end says that the, it has to be effectively competitive. And in this case, now they says, if the, if the minister determined it's in the public interest. Now, who is he? In some cases, we, we, who's the minister responsible for Angie now? You think she knows what the public interest is? I don't. I, 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 I sat there in the Senate and I used to be lost at what she was talking about most of the times. Um, she had a clue. But I wanted to deal with that aspect, if nothing else, in the electricity service because we have to make sure uh, this you've got to keep this government feet to the fire make sure that they know that we know that they're tricking me or they're trying to trick us because i and and, and you know what's happened when that amendment came out i got so many whatsapp messages showing me people who want to be suppliers who apply for licenses and who register companies and stuff i mean you look the prime minister brother is one of them you know, I, I, I'm not saying it's going to do anything wrong. I'm just saying that all of a sudden, now you're going to make the business that he's going to be in in the public interest so they, they can charge with the like. Something is awfully wrong here. Barbados, we have never had a government that, care, that um, doesn't respect the people of this country to this extent. This government doesn't care about anybody, anybody here. Just do what they want to do. And, and, and because they got 30 seats and they got nobody in the house to stand up to them, they're doing what they like. When Barbados, Bar, when the people, the electorate of this country gave them 30 seats, they didn't realize that they were shooting themselves in the foot. And they think they're not often a better part of the tours right now. You, you, you're walking good. The next thing I want to talk here now is um, yes, one of the that I got from your friend Maxine was the NAS pensions. You know, they have been saying to us that they're going to give the yearly pensions that increase to the national insurance people, and they didn't. And then they said that they announced that they were going to give a 4.5% increase. And people were happy because, you know, the public service got a 4.5% increase, but then they carried it to 5. You know what happened? They actually gave them a 2.25%. That is, you know, you, you can't trust the word. Or, is this that the IMF tell them, what do you think you're doing? You can't do that in, our, in my country? No, because the IMF is running this place, you know. So even though they might have intended to do that, the IMF might have um, said, hell, no, you can't do that. We're not allowing you to do that. So we are in a situation now where we, the people of this country, are at the mercy of the IMF, and we are borrowing 
money. And they're walking about telling you know with that borrowed money that we are the fifth fastest growing economy in the world. Matt, see, you know more about these things than me. How how you just grow up and borrow money? When, when you borrow money, you gotta pay it back. I don't suggest growth. And especially if you are not taking that money and using it for productive purposes. I can understand if you take the money and use it for productive purposes. But I am not seeing where this money is going other than in the provision of consultants. Where the consultant can then give you a $7,500 check. You know, um, well, let, me, let me say $8,000 because people might think you're talking about a specific case. Sorry, so I'm not talking about any specific case. I'm just talking about that's the one that comes to my head. Um, but where is this money going? Can you tell us what is happening? I um I I don't understand why uh, they are borrowing all this money. We are not seeing where it's going, and then they're going to borrow more, and they're borrowing more for all kind of things under the sun, climate change, um, sewage, water, you name it. They're borrowing money for it, and we are not seeing when, when you when you borrow money, see, as an individual. You like to build a house or a car but you buy these kind of substantial sums in your life you want to build you don't go and buy borrow three hundred thousand dollars and then you spend it when the fellas down the road drinking rum and that kind of stuff you want to build a house so that you will see what you got there in the end i mean so when you pay back that money at least you got a house and then you reach retirement age your house can still be there and might and definitely Thing you left for your children, but at least you got some best to live. You're gonna go in the, the arms, the arms house, and that brings me now to arms house because we don't call it arms house anymore, we call them district hospitals and that kind of stuff. This government is building a geriatric hospital on top of the water table, the, the, the um, what do you call it the the, the, the aquifer in the, in the bell. Why? The government has decided that those old people are on prime real estate and they shouldn't be there. Then we could build a convention center because that geriatric hospital is earmarked for a convention center. Government headquarters, geriatric hospital, all those things along that line will vanish. I don't know if they're going to stop you from traveling that road too when you get by the garrison, you got to turn and come down um for the garrison and come across Culloden Road to get to town because they're gonna block him from coming down there too. Because they're making I talk about the buses. They don't want their, their guests disturbed. And talking about the guests, I have not seen many guests going to the Hyatt. Um you know the, the hotel there where the person was ran from yeah, you don't, you don't know, but because that was supposed to be finished this year. That that was supposed to be finished this year. And so far, I have seen a fence and some a couple of cement blocks. And they're rushed. That's what they you can't trust this government. I have no brief for Miss Ram. She is probably one of the third worst employers in Barbados, Sandalia being the worst. And so I don't have any brief for her. But what they did to her, they should not do to any citizen of this country. They took up her land and give it to somebody else to develop. And the body didn't develop it yet. But she's technically stopped, forced her from and the thing they were doing it for Christmas sales you know when the Christmas sales were coming they put her off at that point in time you can't do that to people I don't care if it's Miss Ram or, or Miss Sheep you cannot do that to people but the government don't care and, because, and, and they will do it to you next and when they said that I said look people when they spoke in the Senate about it people said oh you defending Miss Ram I said no I'm not I'm defending the principle because they're gonna do it to somebody else. And then you know what they do? They decide they can do the same thing again up in St. Lawrence Gap. 
And then some people start to keep noise, but that's what it did to Miss Brown. You said it was okay, you know. Remember? I say you do that. This, but you, see, you, you have to stand up for principle. I, I, um, Miss Ram, her, her employment record is not the best in Barbados. And, and, and as a trade unionist, I, I, I abhor some of her practices. But at the same time, you, you can't turn around and break the law to disadvantage her. And be, because what is your reason for doing so? Your reason for doing so is to intervene in the market and give her properties a, a property developer. Because this, again, the um, the land was bought for the public interest, you know. What is that public interest? You see, public interest is so um, a public purpose to call it. But what is that public purpose? Which public is, is going to get that money when when the this company builds a hotel there? That's not a, pub, a, a, a public thing. They, they, they do these things because they can and because they know that when you go to the courts in Barbados, that the courts will take forever to to get the job done. And I can tell you sometimes how this hide the case, but you go to court, right? You go to the registration department, you file a case. Your name is McLean. And they don't want your case come up. You have file it by file number. So let's say your file number is 1004. And so when they come on 1003, one, your file will be next. But you have to go down about 200 something. Or you never done it. It's still in the count, but I can find it because it's too far down. And your case will never come up because you can never find the files. That's what happens in this place. So I am very sorry. But this is what is happening in this country. The government has deceived the people of this country and they're doing it every time. We have instances, I want to talk about the housing before I get too far. Let me, let me think because I think we get around the time. The, we want housing, housing about, but everybody want a little house. Today. To put the family in, you get married and find the, the love of your life, and you get children and raise a nice family. But it, you know, I talk about regular family because if you're married and you don't get you, you one of them alternate style, you don't get the children. But they are pushing that, you know. So that's why things that we could talk about. But they decided that they they are in need, an urgent need of housing. So rather than go to sources where we can get the the um emergency thing you can almost get a barge and bring up as much green heart from Ghana as you like they decide they can go to China and import steel houses and you know what happened to those steel houses a lot of steel in there lots yeah yeah and <laughs> not a lot of steel in there and and and, and it, 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 this was supposed to be here in an emergency, you know. I remember when the storm came and you want these things in the emergency. So they they brought them down and they were supposed to go up fast, but they didn't show anybody how to put them up. So they stayed there on the ground, growing grass and all kind of vermin hiding inside them, because nobody knew how to assemble these um jigsaw puzzles. I mean these houses. Eventually now you see some there there where my office used to be on Boy Park Road. I got a few there. But Lord, you know, they take long, they take a few years. And the, and that urgent need that could have been satisfied in weeks if you had gone to Ghana or Suriname to get the hardwood. So I am asking, why go to China? Who benefited from the importation of the, these um these these steel frame houses? You know these steel houses steel in there i am i am convinced they got a lot of steel in there so i want to know who benefited from all of that steel wow mr uh, franklin you have presented i mean this is so <laughs> this uh, listen i i am i am you know i i said we need to we need to create a, a whole um a poster 
with these um with the deception i think we need to just create a poster and it, it, it would i don't know we have to create several posters but i know you had you you had some final words you wanted to say there mr franklin i think i cut you off from a thought because we only no, have a um, couple minutes and then I want to bring okay. in... I, I will, I will, I will talk about these things at other programs, but I want to talk about hospital. Yes. Um, the safe down and um, we call it Martin. It is um, the road down there by hospital. Now that safe, just below St. Michael School, the accident emergency. I, I, keep, I keep saying safe, but I mean accident emergency. The you know. <laughs> Because I saw a video of that place during the rain. You know, it looked like there was nothing overhead to stop the rain from coming in. You bring your people, your consultants, and you think, and the, and the current bill of folk. And the, the, the place has gotten no better. I went there a day. A family member was at the hospital. I had to go there. It took me three hours to bring him because he wanted water. Would you believe that a person is in the accident emergency down inside and he wanted water and they couldn't get him to carry it for him or they could get the body carry it for him. It's, it, 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 it's gone as bad as that. I'm not talking about going in there and getting the doctor's treatment and that thing. I am talking about something as simple as water that they didn't have to give the patients. Just, just let that sink in for a little bit. If that doesn't shock you, nothing would. And I, I was upset with a gentleman. He was saying he he went to like, his wife. He paid all this money. And he saved his money to get his wife to go to Bayview because he knows. That's gonna be trouble, and then she had a little complication. So she had to come to QH. I know you're here three hours, and he can't handle. She carried to get the notes. I I don't know if you missed the birth. The the problem is that we do not know how to it um provide professional people to run our systems. It has to be a politician. So you will get politicians every level because they are going to do your bidding as opposed to be doing it correctly you get a politician to do the maintenance of a building so the buildings always be sick you do the you get a politician to run the hospital so you run it into the ground everything is going wrong but I, 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 look, we want one hospital you know one major hospital or one general hospital in barbados and they are allowing that to all into decay. What is going to happen with the people in this country? Because you, you, the, 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 um, the private sector cannot provide health care for everybody. Yeah, you might have seven thousand five hundred dollars that you can pay to go privately. But how about me that ain't getting none? I go to the hospital, and the hospital is starved of resources. But what they're not starved of. Are, um, and, and Rose talked about them, yeah, even though she was talking about education, communication specialists, and all kind of stuff. You want gauze, you want alcohol, you, you, you and you and you bring a com uh, communication specialist to do PR when people are sick. You know, you, you, you take care of the fundamental things first, you know, you got to know what business you are in. You know, I remember some years ago when um, the Giselle came to Bob, came to the Caribbean. They went they went to Jamaica. The Giselle was handing out cell phones, so I like, yeah, everybody won. You want to know why? Because they were they were selling airtime. They knew what business they were in, so they were giving away the phones because if you got a phone, you can buy five dollar, buy a ten dollar thing, and they get a little cheap phone that cost five dollars. And when that mash up, you can you get so used to having a phone, you can go and buy one. So you got to know what business you are in, and we are not in the business of providing jobs for politicians and communication specialists in every ministry in Barbados. That's what they have done. Every ministry you know have ministry of education got a communications advisor or specialist or whatever you're going 
to do what? We got a permanent set. We got a chief education officer. All the minister got to do is to tell the chief education officer, I give you permission to go and speak on this issue because the chief education officer can't speak unless to get permission from the minister. So the minister don't give permission, but they bring a consultant who the chief education officer got a brief. So you're paying a big salary for somebody who can do the job briefing the bodies who just um being a talking hey government does not care about the money that it receives from the people of this country it don't care about the money that it borrows all they care about is taking care of themselves and making their friends rich and make your friends rich you can use seven thousand five hundred dollars last year i could take a lot more i wanted to talk about um the road network and the potholes i wanted to talk about the sanitation services the collections and even the facilities they build a um a, a little shed up facility at the place in Bagatelle where the um the, the stuff the metal metal stuff and thing a little place for the workers and a little office and thing the floor dropping um but i don't get a chance to talk about that 